Hello again YouTube, welcome back to the ongoing petrol tank process. You last saw it stripped of paint. Uh, I have stripped the side panels as well. Put them all in etch to allow me to handle them. And then I had a, a look at our dents. So our dent in the front has now been filled. I think that's, uh, I think that's pretty close. A little pop marks in it but that will be dealt with later as I'll explain and our little dent up here has been filled and in our side panels the top, this one was dented on top and this one was dented along the bottom the alloy side panels where the air filter fits both of them are fine and they have been etched you can see the original etched colour compared to the rather dusty version that's on there now. So the next step I will be taking is to re-etch to get rid of this bare steel from where I've filled it. It will then get two good coats of primer filler which will be allowed to dry properly overnight, possibly longer. Then I will apply a guide coat so I will bring you back when I do that, so you can see what's going on basically. So I'm just going to re-etch these with aerosol because that's what I've got left at the minute, and then uh, bring you back when it's in primer. Right, there it is in uh, the first couple of coats of high build primer, and it's now covered with a light guide coat in black, which I'll now rub off with some uh, 800s wet and dry. Everything is looking okay. There's a, I know, just looking at it now, there's a small bit there that needs going to need a bit of stopper. The main issue is in a couple of places. There appears to be a silicone reaction which leaves little fish eyes. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, it was panel wiped before I applied the primer. So I just hope my panel wipes not got contaminated in some way. But anyway. This will all get flattened back down now to make sure there are no high spots, low spots, little imperfections like that will be dealt with, the bit where the silicones are will be dealt with, it'll be stoppered up and then I'll give it another two coats of high build primer and do exactly the same again. By which time, fingers crossed, the whole tank will be completely smooth. I won't bother showing you the second lot because it will look exactly like this. I'll just bring you back when I think it is completely smooth and we'll move on to the first base coat and you will start to see the colour as it's going to be. Well, yeah, just realised I didn't actually explain why I was putting a guide coat on. And the reason I'm doing it is primer is always quite thick and lumpy. And by spraying black, any low spots when you flat it off will stay black so you can see them quite easily. So let me just give you a quick demo. A bit of uh, 800s. Obviously wet and dry. But I don't know if you can see that. That's all texture in the... Uh, primer and you want to get rid of that before you put on your base coats because you don't want your top coats being lumpy. So by applying the guy coat you can then see when you've got the surface flat and then if there are any gouges, dings, anything like that left they will remain in black. So I think this is going to be pretty square so if I do find anything obvious, I'll show you that as well, just to give you an idea of what I'm wittering on about and why I'm doing this. Right, I was hoping for something a little bit more clear cut than this. But anyway, to give you an idea of why I bothered, I don't know if you can barely even see it, but this is the corner I filled. It's nice and smooth now. There's no evidence of mapping around the edge or anything like that. So I'm very happy, I've gone down right through to the etch and beyond. 
but I don't know if you can see this. One, two, three. Long, like little, little uh, scrapes, which are still filled with the black paint as opposed to the under, as opposed to the um, etch showing through. And they are little pinholes in the filler, which we have to get rid of. And the way we get rid of them, the way I, sorry, the way I get rid of them, there's plenty of ways, it would probably be superior to this, but this is what I use. It's a, a cellulose based stopper, which is just like a very, very thin, very, very thin filler. Now, you're meant to use a scraper. I didn't. So basically that air dries and then you flat it all again. And the minor imperfections that are in that section will remain filled with the stopper and the rest of it will be sanded back to flat. Now because of the silicone problem I mentioned earlier I've had to go back to bare metal on a couple of places on the tank, which I didn't want to do, obviously, for obvious reasons. So I am going to have to go around with an aerosol and just touching, patching the bare metal with etch again, and then I will then give it its two coats of uh, additional primer and flat it off, and then I will actually bring you back. I only brought this to show you because things have gone slightly wrong. Not horrendously wrong, but you know, it hasn't gone as well as it could have done. So there we go. I'll bring you back later. Right, the tank's actually in uh, <clears throat> white base coat at the minute, having been reprimed and flatted. Unfortunately, the paint has reacted on. On the side, let me see if I can show you. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but there's faint wrinkling there. So it's going to have to be left to thoroughly dry. It must be some sort of solvent problem. Thoroughly dry, and then it'll be recoated. But fortunately, in the interim, the tank seal has arrived. And I'm using Pour 15 this time. I haven't tried this product. I have used lots of different tank sealers, and to be honest, they've all been successful, I think. Uh, so I'll give this one a go. Uh, the tank is completely dry, as we know. It's been rust-treated, cleaned, all the debris out of it I'm aware of. Uh, so basically, we have to open it, stir it, pour it in, make sure it's well distributed around the tank, and then drain. And that's it. So let's just open it up and see what it looks like. But otherwise the process isn't really worth filming as it will just be me pouring it into the tank. But let's have a look. Apparently you can't reuse this stuff so when it's in It's in. Mmm, lumpy. Right, I'll bring you back when I've uh, stirred this for a couple of minutes. Alright, there we are. It just looks like uh, silver paint. Slightly gloopy. No, I thought I'd got it all, but I haven't. I'll have to go find a smaller stirrer. Right, has it finally mixed, so in it goes. Right. 
instructions saying replace the lid. Slush it about. So slush it about I shall. Right, it's all been squished around like it said in the instructions. And now it says to drain the excess, which is draining here if that's all stopped by the looks of it. Our little plugs are out. The other tap is also dripping some out. So, I think that's it. And then once they've finally drained, and zoom you back out here, once they've finally drained, it says to leave it for 90 odd hours, 90, whatever it is, four days anyway, 96 hours. By which time, hopefully, I will be in a position to uh, address the paintwork issues. And I'll bring you back then. Right, the uh, tank has been put into white base coat all over. I have temporarily reattached the badges and then marked out the dividing line with the green fine line tape. Now the part that's now left exposed is going to be going in Etruscan bronze and then the part underneath will stay white which is why it's all taped off with uh, what looks like very bad wrapping for a Christmas present. But anyway, hopefully it'll keep the paint off. The fine line tape can be a bit of a pain sometimes. It doesn't always stick perfectly on bands, but I just have to try it, see how it goes. The badges, of course, will now come off. They were only there while I uh, tried to get the lines in approximately the right place. So the next step will be give it a wipe down and then put the Etruscan bronze on it, or at least what I think is a close approximation of Etruscan bronze, which I will show you in one minute. And there it is in base. Unfortunately, the uh, CCD on the camera, the sensor, does alter colour slightly. As I'm looking at this on the back of the camera, that looks really orange, but it's not. It's a, it is a bronzy orange. Um, I had this problem when I was painting the uh, Harley Davidson. The things look different on camera to how they look in real life. But anyway, that's the colour. You'll see it when it's finished. I've actually done the side panels. I'll show you them as well. well I've done some of the side panels. Um, anyway, that's the colour I've got. and That's the colour it's going. And there we are with our top half in our Etruscan bronze look-alike. So the next job is to uh, tape up again with fine line tape in order to put in the orange contrasting stripe. So I will tape it up, show you where it's going to go and then do it. So we're getting there and then once that's done it'll be lacquer it all and that should be that, I hope. Anyway, I'll bring back the tape top so you can see what we're doing next. Right, now we are wrapped up like a very bad Christmas present again. Just leaving a tiny white strip visible, which we're going to paint orange. Which is uh, correct, actually correct. It had a peculiar orange stripe. I'm not quite sure why they did it that way, but anyway. A contrasting orange stripe, so I'm just going to blow that in, let it flash off, peel it all off, and then assuming it's alright, and there are no guarantees, but assuming it's alright, 
the tank can then be lacquered. So let's give it a go. And there it is. In, uh, it's got its contrasting orange stripe. It's been lacquered, it's not been buffed or polished yet. That's straight out of the gun. Uh, I'm very happy with it. It's not up to uh, professional paint shop standards, but you know, it's been done in a domestic garage with budget equipment. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think it looks okay. It's got a good shine, good reflection. It's nice and even. It'll do. So I'll now put it somewhere safe for a few days to let it all really harden off before I go near it and then I'll have to sort out what I'm going to do with the badges. Right, the top of the tank has an alloy trim panel which sadly on mine is marked there. The rest of it's cleaned up okay. I will try polishing it a little bit more, try and get some of that out, but I'm not overly confident to be honest. However, I'm going to uh, retain this original piece because some of the aftermarket ones I've seen look really cheap and horrible. Uh, and I'd rather have an original slightly marked than a tinny looking unmarked copy to be perfectly honest. Anyway, on the underside, there is like a, a papery seal which protects the uh, top of the tank, the seams at the top of the tank. And uh, rather than use that again, I just got some cheap draft excluder, which is self adhesive. It's self adhesive enough, anyway. Um, I've done this side as you can probably see the glue under here is really really old and fossilized and I had to use well under there I had to use cellulose thinners so a screwdriver to scrape the paper off cellulose thinners to get rid of all the old glue which took some time and then I stuck that on so that will be going on but not until the tank's mounted, obviously, and uh, that will finish the top of the tank off. So now I've just got to try and source taps. Um, so I'll get more spending, but I shall have a look, see what I can find online. Right, the badges should have a white insert with a chrome surround. I tried freehanding them with a small brush and that wasn't very successful. So I've taped them down, cut them out with masking tape and I'm going to try spray painting them. I'm not entirely sure how successful that's going to be either to be honest, but I'm going to give it a go. So the first thing is to match because being metal I don't think the base coat will stick to it to be honest, so a quick squirt of etch. Anyway, I shall have to shake the can a bit more. I'll bring it back later. And uh, once we get this black paint off the rest of the inner side panels, once more underneath, we discover Etruscan bronze over white, which suggests to me that uh, these were repainted when the colour scheme went to salmon pink. And it's quite clear the Etruscan bronze goes over white which coincidentally so I did it. So there you go. This bike, at least parts of this bike were dove grey, parts of this bike were Etruscan bronze. And I suspect a lot of it was changed out of the factory. So it could be pumped out as a 72 year bike when it was in fact a 71 year model. So 
instead of just being sitting about unloved, unwanted. Right, I shall continue stripping these off and then decide what I'm going to do colour-wise. 